Hey guys, so two out of the three trig functions you're gonna be using all the time are sine and cosine. And there's specific things you need to know about those functions when you're using them. Now before we start, I wanna talk about angles. And there's three basic types of angles you can have. Angles can be um, absolute, or they can be relative. Relative to the x-axis or y-axis. Absolute means that it's measured from zero degrees or the positive x-axis, which is right here. Relative, which can also be referred to as against or measured from. So I can say, for example, that this angle right here for this vector is against the x-axis. I'm going to call this theta x. Or I can say that this angle over here is measured from the y-axis. Relative, measured from, against, same thing. Um, those are the three types of angles. And you should be able to convert from one to know how to convert from one to the other. So for example, let me say, let's say that this angle right here is 30 degrees. Um, this angle right here is 30. Now this angle is against the x-axis because it's closest to the x-axis. Now it's the negative x-axis, but that is the closest x you get. So that is the angle that is relative to the x-axis. So I'm going to make it blue. And let's say that this is 30 degrees. If that angle is 30, then this angle over here is 60. That angle is the one that goes with the y-axis. So it's measured from the y-axis. So this has to be 60. Let me make this a little bit smaller here. And the absolute angle is the angle that comes all the way from 0. I'm going to make that green. And it's going to be this guy here okay now this angle is obviously 90 plus 60 so it is 150 degrees so you should be able to get any one of these angles and convert into the others and a little later it's going to be more clear as to what you're doing uh, with that so here let's find the angles relative to x and y that are equivalent to 210 so first of all i hope you remember this is 0 90 180 270 degrees so 210 is somewhere here in fact two ten is 30 more than 180 this is 180 right here negative x-axis so 210 is simply 30 more than that so that 30 degrees is my angle with the x-axis that's the angle relative to the x-axis closest to the x-axis or, or the angle against the closest x-axis the angle against the closest y-axis, which is this axis right here, is going to be this one. That is a 60. And the absolute angle starts from here, and it goes all the way around. So obviously, that angle is going to be 180 plus 30, 90, 90, 30. So this angle is 180 plus 30, um, 210. Right? It's just kind of working um, our way back. But this is your angle with the x this is your angle with the y over here let's do another one so a vector is directed 37 degrees off uh, off the negative y-axis counterclockwise geez so negative y-axis is this guy and i'm going to go off the y-axis plus 37 counterclockwise remember that the um Unit circle grows like this. That's the positive direction. And they confirm here counterclockwise. So we want it to be counterclockwise. So I want to be 37 degrees off the y-axis in this direction. That's the angle right there. So this is the vector. And the angle that I'm given is 37 right here. That is the angle with the closest y-axis right there. So this angle here, which is the angle closest with the uh, with the closest x-axis, is going to be 90 minus that. So 90 minus 37 is 53. And when I do the absolute angle, there's two ways I can go about it. I can go all the way around, but then it's a lot of adding. Or I can just go the shortest way from 0 right here, which would be just this way. And the angle, the absolute angle here, is simply negative 53. Okay? 
Now, notice how for the relative angles, I don't have to put signs because I know that they're relative to those, um, but the absolute angle, you need to put a sign on it. Okay, cool. So the reason we're talking about this is because you need to know what kind of angles you can use, what kind of angles are better. If the angle is absolute, or the angle is against the x-axis, those are the two good angles, they're good angles, then your AX is going to be A cosine of theta, and your AY is A sine of theta. And I've mentioned this a few times. X goes with cosine, if you remember that, then hopefully you remember that the other variable, Y, goes with the other trig function, sine, right? So if X goes with cosine, then the other variable y goes with the other function sine. So we actually only have to remember one of them. If your angle happens to be against the y-axis and you can't change it for whatever reason, then it's basically the opposite here. A will be going with sine and, I'm sorry, ax is going to go with sine and y is going to go with cosine. So if you have the bad angle, then you have to remember to flip the trig functions. My recommendation is that you stick with the good angle and if you're given an angle on the y-axis, just replace it. So again, for example, if I know that this is 30, I get rid of it and I make this a 60. And I can use that. Your professor um, is going to be fine with that unless he specifically tells you to use the angle that's given, um, which is very rare, right? Usually he doesn't care. In fact, he might even be proud of you that uh, you knew how to flip the angles. <laughs> cool. Um, let's see, decompose each vector, they both have size 5, let me write that here. Using the given angle, don't change it, right? So don't swap the angles, let's decompose them. So decomposing the vectors means that I'm going to have, let's call this A, and this is going to be B. Um, so I have AX down here, and then I have AY up here. And to decompose these things, I just have to do a is ax is a cosine of theta. And we've done this before. Um, a is 5 cosine of 37. So that is a 4. And ay is a sine of 37 or 5 sine of 37, which is a 3. Notice how the calculator gave us positive values. That's good news. Um, and they are positive values, up and to the right. OK? There's nothing fancy here. In fact, we've done that very problem already uh, a few times. So here, I'm giving you the wrong angle. And the point here is just that since you can't change the angle, you can't flip the angle, right? This would be 37 right here, which happens to be this same angle. Um, but you can't use it. You're going to have to use the wrong bad angle. So you have to flip the trig functions. If you can't flip the angles, you have to flip the trig functions. So now AX, sorry, BX, is going to be B sine of theta. And BY is going to be B cosine of theta. Notice how they're flipped. Um, B is 5 sine of 53 that is a positive 4 and if you plug these numbers here you get a positive 3 and if you notice these are the same exact numbers guess what because the angle was exactly the same angle it's, they're both pointing the same direction I just gave you in one problem this measurement and the other problem this measurement up here but it's obviously the same exact thing and that was that example just to show you how to use um, the wrong one if you have to and how it's basically the same thing okay so if your angle is absolute right so this is the conclusion of all this if your angle is absolute if you have the absolute angle then the sine and cosine function when you plug it into the calculator is already going to give you the correct sign whether it's positive or negative right if it's positive it's going up negative to the left and all that kind of stuff it will give you the correct sign which is awesome um, if you don't use that, you're going to have to add the signs yourself. So either use the absolute angle and it gives you the correct sign, or you should be using the angle that is relative to the x-axis. Okay. So for example, if I give you that this is 
60, you're going to use either the 60 or you're going to use this angle right here, which is 120. You're going to use either one of these two angles, which you're not going to use the one with the Y axis. Don't use the Y angle as much as possible um, because then you're going to have to flip your functions. But if you use the absolute angle or the X angle, then you're good to go. The only difference is that for the absolute angle, you don't have to worry about signs. And with the relative angle, you have to look at your vector and make sure that you plug in the signs. We'll do an example just now. So the question is, why not just always use the absolute angle? Well, they're both just as much work. For you to use the absolute angle, you have to find the absolute angle, which might require adding 90 or adding 180 or whatever. Um, and so either you want to worry about finding the absolute angle, but not the signs, or you don't want to worry about finding the absolute angles, but then you've got to do the signs. It's a matter of preference. Uh, different professors do it different ways. I recommend you go with whatever your professor prefers. Um, and if it doesn't seem like he's very picky about that, then you just go with whatever you prefer. And here, I'm going to do it the two different ways to illustrate this point. So this is 5, and I got a 37. Notice that this angle is with the y-axis. This is a bad angle, right? The reason, again, I say bad is because I want you to just memorize that x goes with cosine and not have to worry about flipping those. Instead, we're going to fix the angle and not the trig function. So I want to do this using the absolute angle. Absolute angle looks like this, okay? If this is a 37, this guy over here is 90 minus 37, which is 53. So the absolute angle is going to be 180 plus 53. So theta absolute is 180 plus 53. And that is 233 degrees. Or the angle with the x-axis, it's negative... 53 there or you could have just used the 53 because you're gonna have to fix the signs anyway um, yeah let's just use 53 because relative angles um, should just be uh, um, positive though again it doesn't matter you're gonna have to go back and check the signs anyway so the first one is to do this with the absolute angle and I told you that if you're decomposing this um, let's say that this is a force so you have you have Fy and Fx. Again, it doesn't matter where I draw these things. Um, I could have drawn it Fx over here as well. Let's leave it there. Makes it more of a little triangle here. Cool. So remember, if you're using the absolute value, then x goes with cosine and y goes with sine. If you plug this into the calculator, you get 5 cosine of two, uh, 233 and 5 sine of 233. Your fx is going to come out to be negative 3 and your fy is going to come out to be negative 4. If you look here, this is confirmed. The signs are correct. Um, this is a negative because it's going to the left. And this is a positive because it is going down. Okay? So that makes sense as it should. The calculator knows because you're telling it exactly what angle to go to. When you give the calculator instead of 53, the calculator doesn't know for sure where that angle is. In fact, the calculator thinks that you're talking about this 53 over here. Right? So that's why it's going to give you positive, and you're going to have to change them to negative. So now with the absolute angle, with the relative angle, fx equals f cosine of theta, 5 cosine of 53, fy equals f sine of theta, 5 sine of 53. And if you do this, you get a positive 3 and a positive 4, put them in the calculator. But then you look at your diagram, and you realize actually they're negative. And since I'm using the relative angle, not the absolute angle, I'm going to have to verify my signs. Um, and then that's when you're going to say, actually, these guys are, just put a negative. Negative 3, negative 4. Either way, whenever you get an answer, you should always be double checking with the vector diagram anyway to be, to be safe. Um, but again, the point here is you can use either one. 
and um, the absolute value will have the benefit of not having to find the correct sign if you do the extra work of finding the absolute value. All right, that's it for now.